What we do at uh, the Baby Trail Health Center is, you know, uh, we were working with a um, very high risk um, population, uh, one of the highest rate. In, in the neighborhood that we serve, violence is the number one cause of premature death. And that's kind of the neighborhood that we're working in in San Francisco. And uh, so I was seeing a lot of kids in clinic who were having lots of problems with, you know, uh, behavior and learning. Um, a lot of kids sent to me for ADHD. And then when I looked at, when I did my job as a pediatrician and did an actual thorough history and physical exam, what I found was a lot of them were really in the spectrum of trauma and not necessarily PTSD because there's no post, like when you go home to it every day, there's no mm. uh, PTSD, but really um, w what we're now calling more trauma spectrum disorder or developmental trauma disorder because it, it goes on and it affects kids' development. And, um, and uh, when I read about the ACEs study and saw that, um, you know, for, for these adults, those who are exposed to, you know, four or more of these categories of adverse childhood experiences, they're, um, compared to someone who had none of these, their risk of um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease was, two and a, was 260%. For hepatitis, it was two and a half times. For uh, depression, it was four and a half times. For suicidality, it was 12 times. For IV drug use, it was 46 times. For autoimmune disease, if you had two of these adverse childhood experiences, your, your risk was double as compared to someone who had none. And so as a pediatrician, I was like, wow. You know, I give the tetanus shot all day long, <laughs> but I haven't treated a case of tetanus in a while. And so really prevention is the key. And what we started doing was universal screening. So we have, for every child, when they come in, they, you have their, your annual physical, and you know, I ask about how many ounces of milk you're drinking a, a day, and are you potty trained or not, or are you meeting your developmental milestones? And the other thing I ask about is, has your child ever been exposed to anything um, scary or traumatic? Have they ever witnessed any violence in the home or in the community? Has, um, have they ever been harmed by anyone? And I kind of go through, and you know, not like on a checklist, but um, I, I go through with my mental checklist and um, do an ACEs screening on every single one of our kids, and then we do, um, uh, and then we score it, right? And then I can also, so when we did this, it turned out that 12% of our kids had a score of four or more. Now, as a pediatrician, and that is, by the way, when the parent is telling me, mm. and I'm a mandated reporter, right? So the parent at home is telling a person who is legally required to act on this, and of those families, 67% had at least one adverse childhood experience, 12% um, had four or more, and I can already say, just by looking at their uh, chart, that that child is twice as likely to have heart, uh, heart disease, two and a half times as likely to have <coughs> hepatitis, 12 times as likely to attempt suicide, 46 times as likely to be an IV drug but user. I, and I think that the big question has always been with this work, what do you do about it then? Because yeah. you are just one physician, you're a pediatrician in a very busy practice. Um, so what do you do? What was, the, what was the solution that you came up with at your clinic to make sure that these families were then getting some follow-up? Well, if I had to deal with that on the daily and I didn't have a way to manage it, I would have a nervous right now. <laughs> but um, fortunately what we did, because this clinic was designed to reduce health disparities and inc improve outcomes for, f for families in this community, we had a, um, a case manager, it's like a social worker, we had a psychologist on staff, and this was all provided through grant funding. We had um, an insurance counselor, because a lot of our families are so disorganized that they you know, they lapse out of their insurance and don't renew and then they, they don't want to come back to the clinic because they don't have insurance. So just making sure that folks have access and then I could literally say, wow, that sounds like a lot. You know what? I have a, a colleague right down the hall who really might be able to help you with some of the behavior your child has been having ever since they witnessed 
X, Y, and Z happening at home. And I can also say, it, what's very interesting, because many of our families recognize that this is the truth, right? Like if I say, you know what, we understand now that at this actually um, is harmful to your child's health and increases their risk of having um, harmful outcomes in adulthood. And I, we have resources to help you manage that. Mm -hmm. And I can just walk them down the hall. So we have a multidisciplinary team um, and that's how we manage it in our clinic. And we meet once, once a week and we have rounds and we just talk about all the cases and make sure families are plugged into the right resources. Mm.